This is the Kamrui mini PC. This is a small PC that you're probably not going to be gaming with, honestly. Here are the specs. You can actually hear it moving around in there. This thing upside down, speakers upside down. It's a mother in China. Wow, this looks pretty cool. A lot of airflow, two HDMI out, one USB it's for headphones. Of course, this is where you can lock it down so no one steals it. USB port in the back, three more in the front. These are USB 2.0, I believe, and these are 2.0. Four USB ports, two HDMI. One Ethernet, I believe this is gigabit. Is this the front? It's just like this, Let's turn it on like this. That makes sense, I guess. Just, you know, the cables on the back. Doesn't really weigh too much. Uh, Included HDMI cable. This is the charging brick. This is 30 watt uh, brick. I believe that the CPU that's in here is an Acceleron CPU. And the amount of water it takes is, I believe is 15 watts. So that's probably why we don't need a lot of uh, a lot of power. And this is the mount that so you can mount it on the back of a monitor or the back of a TV. Of course, here's the manual. Here it shows you that you can mount it on the back of a monitor or the back of a TV. I'm really curious about opening this up. I don't expect anything to be removable on this PC. Unless it has laptop RAM, it's not going to be removable. And it can't really support too much of it because of the low wattage it has. The same with an NVMe drive. Unless it has a, it has a SATA SSD in here, then you can switch it out. But I'm still wondering, oh, this uh, low budget system that you see right here, you know, because this is definitely going to be better. And this display cable, not the right one. Let's put this up. There's a power button. Oh, lights up. I wonder if you can customize that. What goes best with these mini PCs is a 4K display, which is what I'm gonna be testing it on. All right, let's go through the entire setup and then I'll get back. It's been like this for a couple of minutes already. While we're waiting for this, I would like to clarify that I'm using this 4K display because even though this PC is not meant for gaming, you should still be able to go watch videos in 4K, extreme movies and stuff with this PC, okay? Not gaming, this is more like Microsoft Office, you know, using Word, Excel, it's fine for that, okay? That's why I'm using this 4K display. This thing is supposed to support, I believe, three 4K displays. That is what the CPU is able to support. This one only has two HDMI ports, and should be able to do two 4K displays with no issue at all. 4K, 60 hertz. I think it just rebooted without me even being able to get into the system to be able to do anything. Ah, I hate this. This thing is taking so long. Feels like I'm booting into Windows 8 for some reason. Probably gonna crash on me last minute. All right, so what we got here is a fresh install of Windows 11. Of course, I already see a couple of things wrong here, you know. Oh yeah, I never checked the resolution of it. Let's check the display settings. What resolution is this displaying at? All right, so it is actually displaying in 4K. As you can see, 4K resolution. And I believe it's 60 hertz. Right, let's get back to downloading an acceptable browser. So this is the T105 Celeron CPU. It has eight gigabytes of memory. There's slots used, one of two, one of two. I mean, this thing has two slots. Anyway, it's running at base DDR4 speed of 2400. That's acceptable. And it has integrated graphics, as you can see. This is the CPU. This is a N5105, an Acceleron processor from Intel. Of course, it's a quad-core processor. It's no hyper-threading, but frequency is 2.9. It's 10 watt CPU. I thought it was 15 for some reason. And it was released on the first quarter of 2021. Supports up to 16 gigs of memory. This one only has half of that. It can do uh, 4K support and it can support three displays. And I believe this thing can support, it can support uh, 14 USB ports. Max temperature is 105 degrees Celsius. 
I really don't think anyone's going to be able to get the CPU to that temperature, considering it's probably going to crash before it actually gets above 80. SATA drives, the wireless AX Max, so that is for the Wi-Fi. Looking at the pass mark for the CPU, this is what we get. So the pass mark is 4106. What's the newest? Uh, what's it called? Call of the uh, COD, what's it called? What's the new thing called? All right, so so this is the CPU that's actually required from the latest Call of Duty. Uh, let's see what pass mark it gets. So the required CPU to play Call of Duty nowadays is actually getting this pass mark. You know, it's uh, i5 2500K and it's getting a similar pass mark to our CPU. It's what, like five points higher? Well, I think that's kind of funny. And this is, of course, uh, a 10 watt CPU compared to a 95 watt CPU. So, you know, it actually really shows the difference that in a couple of generations, you know. Anyway, something else is that this Celeron CPU, it's not a desktop CPU, not one of the, the latest sockets, not a 12100, 1700 sockets, none of those. Anyways, let's go to youtube.com and uh, we're gonna be searching videos from the best YouTuber of all time. And there he is, of course. One and only. Let's see, just pick out a random video, I guess. Set resolution to 4K. And uh, this thing is not really struggling to run this at 4K. CPU and GPU seem to be doing a lot. This thing responds quite fast. It's not meant for gaming. I was actually more interested than what the PC can do because it, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM. You cannot be expecting this thing to do a lot, but I'm actually interested in taking this thing apart. I don't know if you can hear it. Making a little bit of noise. I want to open this up and see what is removable and what is not. We're gonna take it apart. The goal is to take it apart and that afterwards it's still working as it was before. Every time I see like like an opening like this, I always think that the manufacturer is, in, is encouraging you to open it up. So you can actually add an SSD in here. But that's not enough. Let's see if it has Laptop RAM, it has the RAM set it on. If we can or cannot actually change the the drive that's actually in here. I'm not sure if this is actually holding anything in place there, but screws should be under here, right? Under the feet. Yep, here we go. Just like always, hide the screws in plain sight. This is actually not that hard to actually get into. This comes out. Um, what else? All the screws are there. So yeah, this thing just uh, goes on top of here like this. Then you just, just push this up. Oh, and you can also just take this thing off and just mount this. Okay, the screws on this one are silver and they are a bit longer. Oh, also, I'm using just a regular uh, Phillips head screwdriver for this thing. Not too complicated, you know. I don't think HP, Dell, or Apple developed this, so we should be good, you know. All right, there's the NVMe drive. For some reason they crossed out the name of the manufacturer for that. Is that? Oh no, that's a SATA. That's an M.2 drive. Yep, it's an M.2 drive. All right, it has two notches instead of one. This, I've never seen this manufacturer before. But anyway, you can easily swap this out. Set this over here. Move that aside. I'm wondering whether or not I should actually. A lot of times, you know, 
you never wonder whether or not you should you know you just wonder why not sometimes never think never thinking that you should do something you end up messing it up and oh wow so it actually does have laptop memory <laughs> So I do not see anything, you cannot add any more memory to it. And it's 2600 megahertz, so we're missing out on it because the base, the, the speed is set, set to uh, uh, 2400. So we got the complementary metal oxide semiconductor or CMOS battery. Yeah, of course this is double sided RAM, you know, it has chips on both sides. You can easily upgrade the RAM. I mean, not easily. I mean, you just have to remove like 20 screws in order to get into it, but at least they're all Phillips head. You can actually upgrade the memory. I don't know about having faster memory on this since it might consume more wattage. I mean, I mean, overclocking is really out of the question with this PC. You have to be really insane to try to overclock this poor PC. Now, sometimes I'm recording and, you know, worst nightmare will be but I do all of this and then all of a sudden I realize that I'm not recording. No. It has a pretty big heat sink. I wonder why it has a little chamber like this, you know, especially since uh, all of this, you can actually see right through it. So it actually provides good ventilation. I wonder why it's all going to one side instead of just, you know, like moving it all up and stuff. I think that would be better. But then again, I am not an engineer. Don't need to go through the whole this this whole thing that I just went through. You can just go like this and just take it off. So I should just really pay more attention to things. So you could have just taken this thing off the entire time. This thing, the whole purpose of this thing is to expand the storage with a SATA drive. So you can just use it like this, just fine actually. I don't know why I didn't notice that. Of course, there's only one way to put this back in. Align the USB Type C port. Put it in, then you lock it, and then it's all solid. You won't lose your SATA storage. And there you go. All right, now that I've put it back together, let's actually test it out to make sure that everything is still functional. So let's press the power button and see if it still works. It's not only some updates. Let me just uh, unpin this thing. <laughs> 